Oh. oh. Okay. That's fine. Who's open? You? Yes, she has. Okay. I probably didn't see it in the uh, in the group me thing. I probably didn't see it. Oh, okay. Because I don't look at it every day. Okay. So. She might have put it. Did she put it in there? That's how you found out about it? No, sir. She oh, she called you. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Oh, okay. First Sunday that she sent it. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to his name. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Glory, hallelujah. Well, it's a blessing once again to be in the house of the Lord. And we are excited about another opportunity to come and fellowship. Another opportunity to come and study his word to interact one with another iron sharpening iron amen and uh, we also are excited for those of you who are watching us through live streaming tonight amen make sure that you go and share and like and let someone know that we are here at 1518 gum branch road jacksonville north carolina where we're reaching the unreached and discipling the undiscipled throughout the world for christ I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I hope, pray that you all have been having a great day. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be alive and well and healthy. And so we are excited about that. We also want to pray for those that are sick those that are shut in tonight we do send up prayers for them yeah. special prayer for sister Jeanette amen Anderson amen and in, in, in her absence tonight amen she normally is here on Wednesday night but she did have an episode uh, yesterday her sister-in-law was just telling me about it I believe Kent might even be back there amen but uh, she's home resting now praise yeah. God hallelujah yeah. Yeah. amen God is able yeah. he is a healer and a deliverer Amen. And of course, we continue to pray for our pastor, our co-pastor. Amen. In her absence, amen. We know that God is progressively strengthening her, giving her what she needs. Amen. Even in the midst, what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for good. So, so she's able to get a little rest. Amen. She won't take the rest, but God will make a rest. Amen. 
And, uh, and so uh, we know that all things work to good Amen. for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Uh, we're going to get in the word in just a moment, but we're going to have a, a moment of devotion and prayer. And uh, then we have a little praise and worship, and then we get into our Bible study for tonight. So please, amen, uh, call some people up, amen, get some more people online uh, so they can come and, and hear what the Lord has to say on tonight, amen. To me, there's nothing else more important than coming and getting God's word, amen. amen. We only take only an hour and 15 minutes to do this, amen, and I know we ought to tithe at least, amen, 2.4 hours, amen out of a day praise God that belong to him amen, amen. he give us 24 we ought to give him 2.4 amen. amen praise the Lord <laughs> amen and so amen uh, this little bit of time that we take to study God's word won't hurt anybody so please tell them come on let's get in the word of God amen, amen. come on y'all amen let's give God some praise saints so good to be in the house of the Lord on tonight we thank God for our Bible study and for his word which is why we're here and we're going to be reading from uh, Psalm 91, and we're going to start at the first verse, and it reads, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Ye shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Give God some praise for his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our hiding place, that it's in you, Lord, that we can take refuge in times like these. Lord God, we look to you from whence cometh all of our help on tonight. And we thank you and honor you for the privilege, Lord, to come and to gather in your name, to gather as one, to study your word and to hear on high from you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word that surpasses everything that we will ever be challenged with, Lord God. We thank you that you cover us, and we thank you for your blood covering over our nation right now, even over those that are going through right now and the loss of their children, Lord, in these times that we're living in. Lord, we know that you are faithful to give us your comfort. So we thank you for your comfort for the families of the children who were slain, God, but we take refuge in your word on tonight, and we know that, Lord, we have faith and your promises that are yes and amen, Lord. So we look to you for your word on tonight to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and clarity, O oh God, to guide us in the direction that you would have us to go as your children. Thank you, Father, for our apostle and those that are absent, those that are on their way, those that are present. Let your word come forth with clarity and power on tonight and help us, Lord God, to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, rightly dividing your word, Lord God, so that we can be a witness and bring glory and honor to your name in the earth. And, and this is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. We pray and we thank you, Father, and we say thank you. Amen. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The enemy is defeated on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for another opportunity to come. And we ask, oh God, that you meet us here. We ask, oh Heavenly Father, that you would let the word ring in the ears of the hearers. We ask, oh God, that you would open up channels and avenues. Uh, so that more would have a desire, God, to get into the Word, to study your Word, O oh God, and to participate, Lord God, in a midweek service, in a midweek opportunity, O oh God. Uh, not just on Zoom, not just uh, on the Internet, God, but just uh, in person, O oh God. Uh, we we'll sacrifice the hour to come out, Lord God, in person. Uh, would say to the devil, say to the enemy, that you're not going to take this hour from me. But I, I shall be counted among those that are present in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we declare and we decree, God, that it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We do thank God for all of you. Uh, who are watching through live and those of you who are in the sanctuary amen and God has uh, uh, been good amen and uh, I have been uh, blessed through this study of the book of first Corinthians amen and we are going to continue on tonight I believe last week amen we um, uh, we kind of stopped at um, very near the very end of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, the last few verses that we did read was um, 9 through 13 uh, so we'll read those uh, to get us started and to get us moving um, for this lesson on tonight and we're still talking about things that ought not be in the church <laughs> there's just some things that ought not be amen and uh, so we were talking about the discipline. Uh, Paul was talking about, hey, you got to discipline. You got to be disciplined yourself. And then you have to discipline uh, others within the body. That it is God's responsibility to judge those who are outside the church. But it is the members of the church, the body of Christ, who is to discipline one another. So we are supposed to discipline one another. We're supposed to go to one another in love. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and get the other on Straight Street. Amen. If you get off of Straight Street and you get on, you know, Bad Street. Amen. It is up to my brother or my sister to come to me in love. Amen. Pull me to the side. Amen. That's the best way to do it. Amen. Yeah. Now, if he won't hear you, your brother or sister won't hear you, you don't gain them, then maybe you have to take it to the church. Now, when we say take it to the church, we're not talking about having something crazy going on on Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. But we're talking about maybe get with some leaders in the church, uh, two or three of you, and take it to them. And they, you know, judge it and, and see what can be done. And the whole objective is to gain someone. It is not to condemn no one or to make anyone feel bad, but it's to cause, it is to cause one to repent and be restored. Amen. And so we saw in verse 9, it says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians, and he's talking about sexually immoral people in the church. Amen. Not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world. And he clarifies it in the very next phrase of that verse. He says, or the greedy, um, or the greedy and swindlers, or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. He kind of puts in that category of sexually immoral 
He, could, he also puts in there people who are greedy. He puts in there people who are swindlers and people who are idolaters. When you talk about sexually immoral, we're talking about people who are engaged in sexual activity outside the will of God, which would include fornication, adultery, which would include incest, um, bestiality, and also one of the most popular sins that people engage in today is homosexuality. I say popular because it is so popular that there are laws that protect those who are involved in that sin. And I must call it a sin, not because I'm just a mean person, but because the Bible is a sin. And I think as long as we um, go along with God, that eventually, uh, even though now we may be unpopular to refer to it as sin, but in the long run, there are going to be many people who are going to be happy that we stood our ground. Because uh, we all are going to have to stand before God one day and give an account for what we have done in this world. Amen? And uh, so I want to be on the Lord's side, and I want to hear the Lord say, well done. Now, he includes in that category also greedy. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about greedy, you're talking about people who are not satisfied with what they have. And we're talking about people who are always trying to outdo somebody else. Think about a greedy person. A greedy person cannot stand for anybody to have a bigger house than them, a better car than them, or more money than them. They got to keep striving to try to outdo the next person. And that's a spirit. That's a spirit that you don't want on your life. Because if you get that spirit on your life, you'll never be satisfied. You'll always be striving and trying to accumulate more and get more, and you will find out that less is, is more. As you live in your life, you literally will find out that less is more. That sometimes the more you got, the more headaches you got. <laughs> Amen. The more you got to be content with, uh, contend with. And, uh, and so he says, you know, don't get around that spirit, nor a swindler, someone that's always trying to pull the cover of the wool over other people's eyes. Idolaters. Amen. Um, and idolaters, of course, you know, those who have made things their God. Amen. Money, idols. Amen. Sometimes, you know, you can make anything out of a God. But he said, there be no gods before me. Amen. I am the Lord thy God. Amen. He said, but in verse 11, but now I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother. Right. If he is guilty of sexual immorality, greed, or an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler. So he's talking about that. <laughs> it's a potential that even though a person might be saved, for them to not act saved. And if they're saved and they're not acting saved, we know what that is, right? That's carnality. Amen. So he's telling us not to associate with people who are carnal. So in the church, he, he, he placed a whole lot of emphasis on that. We talked about it last week. He talked about that leaven and how that leaven, amen, which is just a little bit of sin, being allowed to run rampant will cause it to spread. And the next thing you know, you got a whole congregation of people who are under that spirit, under that, under, under that the dominion of that devil. And, <clears throat> you know, you have to be very careful. He says now, uh, as we keep on reading, <clears throat> he says here, this, this is crazy, but look at uh, verse number 11. He says, not even to eat with such a one. Amen. Don't even sit down and have lunch or have uh, be participate in potluck. You know, don't 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 be involved with even eating with this Christian, this person who calls themselves a saint, but is more of an ain't. He says, don't have anything to do with them. That can be very hard especially if you've known a person for a very long time. So he's serious about this to the extent that, that we got to take it upon ourselves to love a person enough to tell them when they're wrong. Huh? That's what we got to do, whether it's a, a preacher, whether it's a deacon, or whether it's just a lay member or whoever, we still got to have enough Holy Ghost in us to go to a person in love 
and say, hey, pastor, you know, I ain't trying to get in your business, but I want you to know that what I saw the other day, uh, I didn't think it was of godly character. Uh, can you explain to me what you were doing? You see what I'm saying? It's a way to do all things, amen? amen. And you didn't come down the aisle. You didn't, you didn't you know, get on a, a bullhorn. And you didn't blast it all over the church and all over the neighborhood, but you went, you came to the individual. Yes. Amen. Now, I personally would have a whole lot of respect for someone that does that. Amen. But for someone who just puts my name on a soundboard, amen, just to make me look bad, I got to pray hard that I don't want to choke that person. You know what I'm saying? He says here, um, he said, don't eat. Verse 12 says, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? It is not, though, it, is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? So what kind of judgment do we do since we're at this word judge? Because we're always hearing people saying, don't, don't judge me. What are, they, what are they really saying? Don't tell me that I'm wrong. That's what they're saying. But if I'm judging someone, I am literally passing a sentence on them. I'm not passing a sentence on you to tell you that you're wrong. I don't have the ability nor the power to pass sentence on anyone. Y'all ain't hearing me. Huh? You got to know the definition. Uh, uh, when a judge gets a conviction, he throws you in jail. He says that you are what? Guilty of the crime. You know, and then he comes up with a sentence. Some are lenient, some are strict and hard. Whether well, you're going to jail or you're paying a fine or you're doing something else. No, we're talking about, he says that we are supposed to do judging, but we do what is called righteous judging. So we judge between that which is right and that which is wrong. We do not pass sentence. Amen. We do not condemn anyone. Only God has the right to condemn a man. Amen? Amen. So, you know, kind of just love on people and kind of ignore them the next time they tell you, don't judge me when you see them doing wrong. I'm not judging you, brother. I'm just pointing out to you the difference between right and wrong. Yeah. And it's up to you to make the decision on what you're going to do about it. He tells us in um, verse 13, he says, God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. Now, if we get to a place that we, that is established in uh, the mouths of what? Two to three witnesses that this is so, this is true, that this brother or this sister has done wrong, then we are supposed to do something about it. We're talking about a brother or sister. We're not talking about a person in the world. We're talking about a church goer, somebody that's a member of our congregation. We are supposed to, once it's established in the mouths of one or two witnesses, two or three witnesses, then what we are supposed to do? Purge. Now, if I'm going to purge something, that means that I'm going to what? Remove it. We have the right, and somebody might say, you don't have that many people in church now. Why you want to put somebody out? Well, you might not have nobody if you don't purge <laughs> some stuff that's wrong. Huh? And the reason that so many people have turned away from the church is because we have allowed too many cancers to roam. Amen, like I'm preaching now. Huh? We have allowed too many cancers to roam in the church. And the funny thing about it, those people who were, who were putting the church down, who were putting the pastor down, who were saying that this wasn't right and that wasn't right, they gone. And they don't send other people away. Huh? And, 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 and so then now they don't moved on. That cancer done done its job. And they say, well, we don't got all that, we got all that we could sick. I don't think no more of them going to get sick. <laughs> I think the rest of them got good immune systems, so let me go see if I can get to another church and start causing havoc and problems. You know, watch out for the antagonists. 
Hmm? An attack. And you cannot shepherd goats. You can only shepherd sheep. Huh? The antagonist is always button. A goat is always what? Button. But can't get in line with nothing. If you say go to the right, they say, oh, no, I'm going to the left. You say, well, let's go to the No, no, I'm going to the right. It's an antagonist spirit. It's one that will not submit. And, I mean, it's a manner and a, way, a good way of doing things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if, but the thing about it, if a person is... Let me just say something about security, too, because y'all saw what happened once again in a school, Christian school. Someone walks in. Uh, what, what was she? She was transgender? Okay. Well, who was she angry with? But anyway, she came into church with an AR-15 and killed six people. And the sad thing about it, someone said that she put on online that she uh, had sent a message to a friend of her that she was going to die that day. So she wanted a death sentence. But she wanted to also hurt other people's lives before she left. So she had mental problems. No doubt about it. She had mental problems. Now, let's say this. We want to minister to people who are, who are confused. But you also got to guard yourself from the spirit that is behind their confusion. And so we as a congregation, we need to, I've been talking to security, we got to have a plan for Bible study as well as for church for someone who is so confused that they will want to hurt us. Amen? Y'all ain't saying nothing. We need a plan from the parking lot to the front door throughout the church. We need a plan. Amen. We have to tighten everything up. We can't just have a lock on the door anymore. Amen. We got to tighten things up very much because if I was the devil, I would not want people to come to this church. Why? Because this preacher in here is preaching and teaching the truth. So I, I've got to stop him and scare everybody else. Smite the shepherd, scatter the sheep. Huh? That's what the enemy wants to do. It happened with the disciples. Don't say it can't happen with us. And so we as a congregation, we're going to have some mock rehearsals. We're, we're going to become conscientious about it. I don't think the answer is for everybody to carry concealed weapons. That's not the answer. The answer is, first of all, prayer. We're going to have to ramp up the prayer. Elder Tabitha knows it. She's over in the We're going to ramp up the prayer in this ministry. Amen. Amen. That we be covered yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. When we're in here, we're covered by the blood. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, when we go to Walmart, we're going to be covered yes, by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's the most powerful yes. protection that we have. Yes. Don't, don't think we're just going to come up with a plan and not pray. The devil is a liar. Huh? We got to become uh, 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 effectual, not lethargic. Our prayers have been lethargic. Amen. But we have to become effectual, fervent in prayer. Huh? It's got to become a part of the agenda and not something that we tag on, but something that is inclusive. Huh? Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. We pray and we cover our babies and we cover ourselves. And, and then, we, then we go through all the necessary steps 
to, to ramp up the protection, even if we have to hire some professionals. It'll be worth it. Huh? It'll be worth it to have some professionals even on premise if it's necessary. Because you all know, the more that we talk about Jesus, the more crazies are coming. Hmm? The more that we are concerned about people being saved, crazies are coming in. Huh? If you throw out a net, what you gonna get? You gonna get some fish, but you also gonna get some eels. Huh? Come on, talk to me. So don't be talking about how we want souls, but we ain't ready to deal with the souls. Huh? Everybody that's running across this aisle ain't running across this aisle filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Some people are running across this aisle filled with a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. You better discern some stuff. It's serious business, y'all. We live in a holy, whole entirely different world than we did 20 years ago. And it's, and it's changing rapidly. Every five years now, things are just ramping up. Things are getting worse and worse every five years. I'm wondering what the church going to look like 10 years from now. Huh? Is everybody going to compromise? <sighs> Gay is the new black. Y'all know that, don't you? And the sad thing about it, our president, former president, our politicians, our teachers, our doctors, all of our elitists, all of our smartest people have bought into the whole idea. But it's a spirit, y'all. Don't y'all understand what we're dealing with? We're fighting a spirit. We're fighting a spirit that systematically, since the late 1960s, that came together and had a plan. And I preached it to y'all years ago. They had a plan of how they were going to um, uh, desensitize, jam, and convince. And convince. And, and they've done a good job of it. You got to become desensitized first, so that's why they started having all kinds of stuff on television. Yeah. Yeah. Then they had to jam it, and then we in that jamming right now. We're being jammed. Because if you don't accept it, then you're wrong. Yep. So then what's right is wrong, and what's wrong is right. You're being jammed. And eventually, if you give up, you're going to be convinced. And that's what's happened with most of our elites. They are convinced that it's not a sin. And so in our, in, in our churches, even in our churches, in the United Methodist Church, they're having all kinds of debates. E even in some of the Lutheran churches, you know, it's all kinds of, even they, they, they're coming against the Pope now, trying to get him to compromise. Everybody is trying to get people to compromise, or either they're going out and starting their own ministries. But it's a spirit the Bible talks about in the last days. So we got to ramp up all the security that we can. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to be a martyr. Huh? No. It ain't necessary. No. Jesus already died. He already paid the price. Huh? We get enough brothers and sisters over in, 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 in Nigeria, in Northern Africa, who are becoming martyrs. They're killing them left and right over there. Christians being killed by their own color people who are Muslims. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 6, amen, deals with, um, Paul deals with two sins. See, there we go again. <laughs> Talking about sin. <laughs> that are plaguing the Corinthian church. Uh, one is dealing with lawsuits, and the other one is dealing with the word that is called uh, lasciviousness or licentiousness. Now, we see that some believers are taking others before a worldly judicial system. 
Paul says this is illogical, it's illegal, and inexcusable. Why in the world are you going before the world with your disputes? At some point, he said, we shall judge angels, and certainly we should forgive one another if God forgave us. Amen? So, in other words, if you got a problem with something, don't try to take it before a, a, a civil court uh, or, or whatever. Let's work it out. Let us come together and reason together. Amen? All right. So I want to begin reading verse 1 in 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 1 and 6. When one of you has, has a grievance against another... Does he dare go to the law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if, and if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do, you, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? Hmm. I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between brothers? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be def defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. Okay, hold right there. He said it's already a defeat for you. Come on. For you to take me or your brother or your sister before a secular judge. Amen. It's a defeat because we have just destroyed our testimony. Our witness as believers has now been tarnished, you know, you're supposed to be Christians, and y'all can't even get along with one another. Can't you just hear people in the world talking about us, you know, that we, you know. Now, what is the problem with the church? Let me, let me share my view. The church is being one who is following trends as opposed to what? Setting trends. If you notice that the trend today is for people, if they have any dispute whatsoever, is to go to Judge Judy. Huh? They, Judge Judy and, and who else? Judge Mathis. I mean, these people have become superstars, making millions, multi-millions, because of people's stupidity. <laughs> Amen. Rather than knowing what the Bible says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, you know, rather than, li rather than living by the golden rule, we are living by, amen, lawsuits. So we sue now for everything. And rather than the, the church setting the example of not following the world, we are following right behind the world even to the extent that we are suing one another. Now, I've had some brothers to sue us. I've had some worldly people to sue the church. Then I've had some Christians to sue the church. In each case, they lost. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Case dismissed. Case dismissed. It was kind of crazy when I first, you know, heard about what they were trying to do, and I was like, why, why, why do we have to even deal and right. go like this? But we have to have insurance now. Do you not know that we have an insurance policy that literally protects us from lawsuits? Of course, it costs more. Huh? You got to pay for all that. You got to pay for people coming in the church and say they slipped down and they, they, uh, uh, that somebody knocked them down and they just, you know, fell on their own. You, you got to pay for somebody, amen, to come to the altar and you say that God going to heal them and they didn't get healed. 
You got to pay for that. Well, you said that I was going to get healed and I didn't get healed. I'm suing the church. Huh? I'm not saying they're going to win, but I'm saying that they will try. And do you not understand also that you can be innocent, but the judge has the final say. A whole lot of people have been convicted and they were innocent because the judge said so. A whole lot of people didn't wait until the good judge got on the seat, but went before the bad judge, and the bad judge gave them a sentence. And that's why lawyers would tell you, no, we're not going to go today. We're going to hold off until this judge is here. Because they know that that judge has that much power. And so why do we want to take our dispute? Is it too warm in here? Okay. Why do we want to take our disputes and things before the unrighteous? He says that we're going to judge angels. There's going to come a time, amen, during when, when Jesus is crowned Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings, that the angels are going to have to be judged by us. Isn't that something? Lord, have mercy. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> but it says it right here in the text, don't it? I think the main thing that we got to understand is that we have the power to, to handle disputes, is what he's saying here. We have the power. <sighs> Glory, hallelujah. He says here, um, you know, uh, he says, why, why are you doing this? Why are you defrauding yourselves, you know? And, and, and so we as believers, amen, we should try to work things out before we go to court with one another. Verse 9, someone start verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. The who? The unrighteous. The unrighteous. Who is the unrighteous? Huh? The, okay. Now, we have been unrighteous in our lives. And we still fall short of the glory of God. But how are we considered to be righteous? By accepting Jesus and his righteousness has been what? Imputed. Now, y'all going to look up that word when y'all get ready. But, but, but imputed to me is like somebody put a coat on you that don't belong to you to keep you warm. So he don't put a coat on us to keep us warm in the cold, to protect us from the cold. It's been imputed. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But he put it on me. Hallelujah. But those who have not received that coat, those who have not have had it, the righteousness of Jesus imputed unto them is practicing sin. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's what we got to see in this text. They are practicing sin because they don't understand it. They're still trying to do what? Things in their own strength and be evaluated based upon their own righteousness. I see the elder got something on your mind. What, what you got? <laughs> Apostle, I was just looking at judge again uh, because in, in the King James, it uses judge over and over and over and over. And whenever you said that we're going to judge angels, I was checking to make sure that was the same judge. And you're right. It's, it's an evaluate and assessment. So just like you said, I'm looking at it at some point. I don't know how either, sir. We're going to sit and assess, evaluate, and assess angels. Mm. That's all. Glory, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. That, that, that ought to humble everybody in here tonight. That ought to cause you to be humble. Say, God, I thank you. What is mine? Man, that he's even mindful of him. Whew. So, we establish in verse 9 that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom. 
Now, I had to pause right there because Paul, Paul, <laughs> he hit hard, <laughs> huh? He throw uppercuts. He 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 throw, you know, uh, what you call it? Uh, um, uppercut is, is when you come under the chin. Yeah. Amen. Uh, a jab. Yeah. Amen. And then he throw hooks. And then he throw body punches, body shots. Huh? He hitting the kidneys and the internal organs. He hitting everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He don't be playing. And, 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 and this kind of study that we're doing tonight, it ain't for the, the, the people on milk duds. Huh? It ain't for folk that like milk duds. This is for people who like me. Who got teeth and they're able to chew and swallow. Because everybody ain't going to heaven. Huh? Hell has enlarged herself. And millions of people fell in that pit today. It's nothing to take lightly. Every day you got an opportunity to be right with God. Huh? I would not wait, but I would come to Jesus right now. While the blood is still running warm in my veins. You don't know when there could be an accident or an incident. You don't know when your heart going to stop beating. You, you don't know what could happen even before you get home tonight. But if your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you got an assurance that you're going to see God. And so I wouldn't exchange that for anything. Huh? I wouldn't exchange it for $2.5 billion. That's what Jay-Z worth now. I wouldn't exchange it for that. Huh? I wouldn't keep practicing sin. Now, the truth of the matter is, I can tell you that you are practicing sin when I hear you using cuss words out your mouth. Huh? I, I don't have to be judging you. I'm just telling you that ain't right. Huh? And if you keep practicing it without accepting Christ and being redeemed and covered, as we said, by him, you have a chance of not inheriting the kingdom of God. If you are involved in not practicing holiness on a regular basis and you die in your sins, you will go to hell. He says, I wish that none would perish, but that all would come into repentance. God ain't trying to send nobody to hell. He is long suffering, the Bible said. Look how long he suffered with you. Huh? Look how long he suffered with people. He give people chance after chance after chance after chance. And we keep ignoring it. We, we try to become atheists and say there is no God. And every morning you get up, you see the goodness of Jesus. We try to become agnostics and begin to doubt him. All kinds of stuff. But God is real. And he says that those who practice this will not inherit the kingdom. He said, do not be deceived. People are deceived. People are under a spirit of deception in our world. You should not be deceived. You are not deceived because you have accepted the word of God. He says, neither. Now he goes into some of them. He said, neither this. There you go again with this sexually immoral. Hmm? Go ahead, Ellen. Amen. I, whenever uh, we, we delve into the Word of God, and of course the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved, and uh, the question always, people throw that question out there, well, God, if God is love, you know, why would he condemn me uh, if I love a person? If I love a person, that, you know, they're the same sex. And because it's an immoral sin is why he, you know, um, 
He loves you, but he, he has to judge you based on that. You can't say you love God and you still want to practice this. That's not God's will. Right. And you will not inherit the kingdom do of God. Do they love this person or do they lust that person? They lust them. But they consider it as, they say it's love. They say love is love. That's their theme. And I always say, well, God is love. And God is inclusive. You know, his love is, is everything, his character which is love and patience and all these things, long suffering. He doesn't. You, there is no sin in God. You can't find anything like that in God. I love my children, but when they were growing up, I punished them what when they did say? wrong. Yes, yes, yes. So I punished them because I didn't want them to die right. from doing wrong, learning how to become, get to the place where they just, 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 just do anything. You see right. what I'm saying? Yes. You got to set some boundaries. Yes. You got to set some boundaries so that they don't kill themselves. Now, one thing about sexual immorality, I don't know if we got to it yet, but we will get to it. It says that sexual immorality is the only sin, huh, that, that, that affects the individual yeah. more so than anybody else. Amen. So the reason that God don't want us to practice sexual immorality is because he don't want us to destroy our temples that he has given us. It will be destroyed. Somebody else. So, I, was, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Um, when you say that two people who are of the same sex, are you? They can't love one another. That I mean, it is. They. They, they can't eros one another. They 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 may be able to phylos one another. See, there are different words for love. Okay, they may be able to agape one another, but according to God's word, they are not supposed to be sexually loving one another. Right, and so that I just wanted to make sure we're clear because when we use the word and we just say they're lusting one another, that, that can't be a true statement. They love each other, but it's worldly love. You know, it's not godly love mm -hmm. as we know it and as the Bible says. Okay. All right. Right. quicker than a, a person that says that they're Christian. Mm -hmm. And we are Christians, but then we are to be love people. Right. And we're known by the love that we show others. And if somebody out in the world can do better than we can, then it, we need to look at our love. Right. What, what are they saying about the what we say about us loving? Right. So there are different definitions of love, and we need to understand what those definitions are. Amen. There's family love. It's called storge in the Greek. There's brotherly love. It's called phylos. You know, uh, there is unconditional love. It's called agape. You know, and then there's eros that a husband and a wife are supposed to have towards each other. So... It is improper for people, two people of the same gender <laughs> to eros one another, according to the word of God. Now, whether you agree with that or not, you got to stand to God before God for that. But I can see how it has hurt us. I can go all the way back through the Bible, all the way up to today. I can go all the way back to the Bible, we see Sodom and Gomorrah. I can go all the way back to the Roman Empire, and it was one of the main things that caused it to, uh, to fall. I can see what's happening in America right now. So I know that it is not God's perfect will, nor his permissive will. And I do have a scripture, a Bible, that talks about it over and over again. He says, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Well, we know that adulterers, he, he included idolaters here in the same category as the sexually immoral. Okay, then he also has here um, the adul adulterers. Okay, so th that's individuals who are married, but then they're running out on their partner. 
Amen? And then he also has no men who practice homosexuality. Now, I, I didn't come up with that. Huh? I mean, that's, that's the word of God. Huh? That, that's what God says here. And, and so we have to, we got to deal with God with that. Um, he says, nor thieves, nor the greedy. And I explained to you a while ago what the greedy were. People that can't get enough. Always got to try to outdo everybody else. They, if, if, if your neighbor next door to you go and get a new car, you got to get a new car. You always got to outdo somebody else. So you're constantly, you know, wanting more and more and more and more. He said, nor drunkards. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine. Didn't say don't drink wine. It says, do not be drunk with wine, wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. He says, nor revilers. That's people who are just walking in the street carrying those AR-15s. Revilers. Mean people. Doing crazy stuff. Right by shootings. All that. He said, them folk ain't going to heaven. They ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God, nor swindlers. We got a whole bunch of swindlers on Wall Street and Main Street. Huh? And in Church Street. <laughs> Good one, Elder. I don't care what street you're on, you're going to find swindlers. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and you, can, you can be Miss Naive or Mr. Naive all you want to, but I'm telling you, they'll spot you a thousand yards away. I used to give everybody the benefit of the doubt until... And now I doubt everybody before I give them any benefit. <laughs> Prove me, brother. Prove it to me, brother, that you for real. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. I just wanted to uh, make sure that everyone understood where I was coming from when I said God is love. I don't want anyone to take me uh, the wrong way. In John, 1 John 4, 7. It tells us, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, God be because God is love. And this is the love that God was made and manifest among us, that God sent his only son. So we, that's what I'm speaking of. I'm not saying that a person cannot. Right, a sinner. No, you have to be born of the Spirit of God to know God. And God is love. And if you've been born of the Spirit, then yes, you can love because God is love. That's all I was saying. Amen. So is it possible that people are defining another type of love rather than God's love? That they are saying that treating another person kindly could be love? But love is deeper than that. Okay. So we're talking about real love that comes from God. True love that comes from God. And it, it has to be some distinction there. You know, just because I, 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 I want to embrace. or Because basically what they are saying to you is that I have a relationship with this person. And we love each other which includes them embracing each other and all the other crazy abuse that they do with each other because to me it's abuse it's not natural anything that's not natural it's an abuse it's not what God intended it's just like this microphone this microphone amen and thank you Kent for buying this microphone <laughs> glory hallelujah but I tell you what it's made for me to speak into not to throw on the ground you start throwing mics on the ground, talking about drop the mic. You know what you're doing? You're abusing it. Huh? You're abusing it. Don't you come up in here and talk about you're going to drop the mic. Because we're going to drop you. <laughs> you ain't going to pick it up again. I know that much. <laughs> These things cost too much. <laughs> 
So anything that's being used for something other than what God intended it for it to be used, it's abuse. Huh? So people are abusing themselves. They're abusing their bodies. Amen. So in this text, when he says, nor men who practice homosexuality. Now, so if men practice home, he talking about men in particular here, but in uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, it also talks about women uh, misusing their bodies. Also in Romans, it talks about that women misusing their bodies. But he's talking about men who are, uh, it's, it's two Greek words, uh, one deals with the, it says, um, I did a little research, it said the two related Greek words used at the end of 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 are malachus, 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 M-A-L-A-K-O-S, malachus, and arsenikites, arsenikites. So there are two different types of homosexuals. One is um, malakos, and the other is arsenakos. Not uh, let me let me slow down. Arsenakoites, okay, arsenakoites, and that's A R S E N O K O I T E S. Okay, <clears throat> translated literally, the uh, malakos or malakos can mean soft or infinite. So one man has to be soft and infinite in order to have these relationships. So no matter how rough or tough he was growing up as a boy or whatever, he has to be soft. He has to be soft because he has to become someone's wife. <laughs> huh? So you got to change your way of thinking in order to participate in this relationship in order to make it fulfilling to the other who is an Asanakite because the Asanakite is the dominant one. And that is normally the husband. So my thing is, what sense does that make? When women are already soft and they're already tender and it's a sweet thing. Huh? So if, if I'm a man, why do I want to go out and get another man? Because I have been deceived. I'm under a spirit of deception. Huh? And so, you know, I don't know I won't get too, a, too many amens, but I'm just, I'm just breaking it down. So the term was used way back then to describe a person, and, the, and it says often a young boy. So this is what's happening with this sex trafficking. You got young boys and young girls that are constantly missing because you got malakos and arsenikites and all kind of ites that are out there that are trying to fulfill. Listen now, because it all boils down to this. This kind of love that they talk about, it does not start with friendship and just... Uh, just loving somebody, you know, basically casually, it always starts with a, an attraction. It's a, it's a spiritual attraction, and then it goes into a physical attraction, and then it goes into uh, all kinds of things. So the dominant, the dominant role um, this person, the Asanaike, is the dominant one in a same-sex in a same-sex intercourse. Yep. 
Okay. So all I can say, we just need to pray for people. You know. So anybody got anybody else got any comments? Because before I go into, I don't have time really get into the, the next section and do it justice. I don't even know how to say it, but how can a man be with a man? And I mean, what is it there? I mean, you got the same thing, and you uh, you got. I mean, how can you act like a woman when you're a man too? I mean, really, it's 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 a lot of confusion there. Somebody's mixed up for real, and then. It's just not right. It just don't look right. I mean, where did it come from? Where it come from? Yeah. Well, it, 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 you know, it had to come from Satan. It did. It did. You're right. Everything evil came from him. You know, I mean. Um, That's just ugly. The, the whole, the, I mean, this this is very philosophical and theological. But. My definition for that is simply, I believe that Satan hates God so much uh -huh. that he wants to distort the very image of God. And the image of God, in the beginning, he made man in his own image. And in the man was the what? Female. He made both of them. And, but he then he performed a surgery in the garden. Put man to sleep, yes. removed a rib from his side, yes. and formed another man with yes. a womb yes. and called her woman. 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 Yes. And he said that the two shall become one. Yes. Then Jesus picked it up in Matthew and said, you know, the same thing mm -hmm. about marriage, but that the two shall become one. Yes. Talking about male and female. A man will leave who? His mother and his father and cleave unto his wife so did none of the all did none of this stuff come up uh, un until somebody came up with the bright idea i don't need no woman i can do whatever i want to with this man and then that man said i can act like a woman and give you what you need but it's always based upon but the truth of the matter is they could not become one flesh, huh? And they could not procreate. Because the only way that you can become one flesh is when you can make a duplicate. <laughs> you cannot duplicate a man or a woman by two of the same sex coming together. You can get test tubes, and you can, you can put stuff in people and implant and all that, but you cannot come together and make another human being. So, as I end tonight, Cause we ain't we ain't out of word, but we out of time. <laughs> Who? Okay. Um. It's laying the foundation here, and that foundation is still applicable um, in the body of Christ today. But one thing we we don't talk about. Uh, as the church is getting these folks delivered. And we talk about how this can happen and how, but do we talk about, are we praying that when someone that has, that, that spirit is on them walks through our doors, are we able to pray for them and to get that spirit off of that individual? And I feel like 
that's the talk we need to have. We, we understand what it is. I mean, we all walk around and we see it. We know what it is. But we have to, like apostles talking about praying for the, the, the safety of the church and things like that, we have to also pray against that spirit. And this is a tactic of the enemy to get us off track, to worry about this thing, than to how to pray for someone to be delivered from it. I'm telling you, and I, I have changed. I don't condone it, but I don't condemn it. That's what I mean. I don't condemn it. Because I have people like that that I work with, I treat with respect and with love because I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I show them love. I hug them. I shake their hands because I'm a Christian. And that's what we have to be welcoming so people can walk in our doors. To God be the glory. I'm sorry. Yeah. Amen. And that's what we got to do. We got to show them love. Um, ignore, ignore all of the tactics that they have come up with. You got to. Because what you got to understand, Satan gave them all those tactics. And remember I said one, is, one, one, one was desensitizing. I'm not going to become so desensitized that I'm not going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to love you. I'm going to treat you like a human being. But I'm not going to let you jam me either. Huh? I'm not going to let you come in my face and tell me that I got to accept what you're doing and that it's all right. No, I'm not going to be jammed. And I'm not going to be convinced by the help of the Lord. I hope I never, ever become convinced because I know better. I know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And so that is the question. A lot of people keep saying, well, the church ain't handling it right. The only problem with... Um, this jamming and all this stuff, and I got to end, is that you can't get to pray for them. You can't, the Bible says that pride goes before the fall. Until a person humbles them, you can't do what Jesus has not done. If Jesus has not convicted them, if the Holy Ghost has not softened their heart, I don't care how much praying you do or whatever, amen, they'll walk around huffed up, puffed up, thinking that they're better than you. Huh? That's the whole truth. They really literally think that they are better than you. They are more intelligent than you. They are more uh, avant-garde than you. They are more woke than you. You come up, whatever term y'all want to come up with, amen, you are the one that's wrong. And as long as they got that thought in their head, it's nothing we can do but pray for them to have God to open their eyes. So I can't pray for them to be delivered until God opens their eyes. And then they got to want it. So, you know, I'm just saying, don't get sucked in either. Don't get sucked in to accepting what they're doing. Because it ain't right. It ain't right. But still treat them as human beings. Still love them. Because they are, they are God's creation. I didn't say God's children. I say they are God's creation. You was God's creation. Amen. Amen. And you wasn't God's child. But when you became God's, God's child, it was through the blood of Jesus. So they are God's creation. And so we love God's creation. And we pray for all people. But don't, don't ignore this subject. It's too vitally important. It's too, it's, in all of our families, it's somebody in our family that's, that's dealing with this. Huh? Come on, talk to me now. You, you know it's true. In all of our families, we got people who are dealing with this problem. That's how prevalent it is. Yes, ma'am. The way something is written out sometimes stands out to me. Um, and when I was looking at, before he introduced that information, I think this goes along with what you were saying. Um, I apologize, got a little ahead of myself. Uh, there's a, uh, a colon used. Let's see. Apologies. I got ahead of myself as I was reading. 
there's a colon used where he says, do not be deceived. And that's how he introduced all this information. And that's the purpose of a colon is to introduce new information or list into um, a, a sentence or to introduce this new information. And before he gets into all of these things that are going on, he first says, do not be deceived. And I think that's the important part that we take away as Christians. These things are happening all around us, but it's our position not to be deceived in what we're seeing. Um, I know uh, one of the things was um, immoral, and immoral looks different, depends on the generation and the time. Things that weren't allowed 20 years ago are now permissible. Uh, you couldn't smoke weed, and you couldn't do certain things that are now just the norm. So what is morally sound doesn't always look like maybe the generation before it or the generation before that. So I think our position as the church has always got to be not to be deceived. We have to stand upon the truth and the principles that are in the word because those are the things that change not. God doesn't change, although we sometimes push the measuring stick to the left or the right. God doesn't change. Um, so in all we're doing, our position always has to be do not be deceived. That's good. That's, very good. That's good. Amen. Awesome. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. God, as we close out tonight, we pray, God, that someone who's listening, someone who's trying to make a decision, someone who may even be tired of the lifestyle, Amen. They, they're just tired. They, they're trapped, but they're tired, and they want a way out. I want to pray for that person right now, God. If they sincerely want a way out, God, we know that you're able. If they are willing to receive the word and, and not be led by this world and what the world has interpreted and what the world has said, how the world has changed immorality into morality and morality into that which is legal. But in your sight, God, it is sin. But they are ready now, God. They're ready to, to turn around and to come back to you. They're ready to come to you, maybe even for the very first time. But they are just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want to pray for that person right now. Dear Lord, you know who that person is that's under the sound of my voice. And you know how weak they are and how often they have fallen by the wayside. I ask now, O oh Heavenly Father, that you would look beyond their faults and meet them at the very point of their need. I ask, O oh Heavenly Father, that you would offer your forgiveness to wash away all sin and to cleanse from all iniquity. I ask, O oh Heavenly Father, that you would not just give them a second chance, but give them another and another chance. Let them tonight, Lord God, say, I'm ready. I want this. I want Christ. I want to change my life. And God, I ask that you send Holy Ghost who can change them right now. They can be <clears throat> changed by accepting him in their heart. So whoever you may be, just say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for even being under deception. I come to you now and as humble as I know how, and I ask for your forgiveness. Wash me, cleanse me and make me brand new. By faith I believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again on the third day. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Save me, Lord Jesus. And I believe it by faith that my life will never be the same. I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah, amen. Let's rejoice for that person. Somebody is gonna get that. Even if they go strolling, amen, later on and they pick up this broadcast, amen, by strolling on Facebook or YouTube, somebody's going to be delivered from that prayer. Thank you, Jesus. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. It's offering time, time for us to give tonight. Amen. So, yeah, man, yeah, let's get excited. Yeah, it's time to give. Amen. Because he's blessed us to have it, so we got to give some back to him. 
Amen. So we know what to do. You know, I know you're getting ready. You're getting your offering together. Amen. You're gonna do it with a smile because the Bible says God loves a. Amen. We went to vacation Bible school, Sunday school, somewhere, didn't we? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, we give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the opportunity to sow tonight. And Father, we ask that as you, you use it as you see fit. God, and we give it to you freely. We don't give it to you grudgingly, God. But we're running to give, you, give it to you, back to you what you've given us. And God, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would like to be a blessing to our church, here are the eight ways to give. You can send your gift or offering by mail to 1518 Gum Branch Road, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28540. That's 1518 Gum Branch Road, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28540. Or you can drop off your envelope at the church. We also have our ALIBC app. You can also text ALIBC Give to 833-655-4424. That's text ALIBC Give to 833-655-4424. We have the Push Pay app, and we also have our Giplify app at Abundant Life Baptist Church. We have our website, which is www.albc.org, and Cash app at dollar sign ALIBC Events. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Let us get ready to watch this video. <laughs> they got you again. <laughs> Amen. I was giving the thumbs up, so I think I'm good now. Amen. Just a couple uh, brief announcements. Uh, happy birthday to Sister Crystal Mullen. Tomorrow is her birthday. Amen. Uh, services for Elder Brenda Ruffin will be this Saturday in Chacoinity. And services for V. Thomas will be Saturday in Miami. And for more information on those services, please contact the church during uh, church uh, business hours. Amen. Let us go ahead and stand and get ready to be dismissed. Also, we keep uh, our pastor, Pastor V, we keep her lifted up in prayer. Amen. Uh, and all of those who are sick and shut in uh, and bereaved during this time. Our eternal God, who sits in heaven, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for looking down on us and smiling on us this evening, God and gracing us with your presence. Father, as we get ready to depart this place, let us keep your word in our heart until we meet here again, God. And God, we forever give you the honor and the glory and the praise that is due unto you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of God's people said amen, amen, and amen. <laughs>